Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Let's Talk Wedding Show. Another awesome episode. I have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guest that's going to be joining me today. Today's topic is tips for picking the right flowers for your wedding. And I'm really big on really talking to experts and professionals that really do this. And today, you're not going to believe it, I have the one and only Karen Greeno in the building. And I, before I bring her on, I want you to know a little bit about her and who she is. She is the founder and senior designer of Lily Green Thumbs Wedding and Event Design. She graduated from Wake Forest University and has experience in planning, catering, and hotel management. Her and her team has had the opportunity to design over a thousand weddings and events. They are also the game day designers for the Carolina Panthers. Go Panthers! And she teaches floor design classes for hundreds of students. This is a busy lady, ladies and gentlemen. And when she is not behind the table or the laptop, you can find her having a dance party in her living room to Jimmy Buffett with her and dancing with her husband, George, and two little girls, Giles and Mills. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Karen Greeno in the building well, thank you, Rusties. That was the warmest welcome I think I've ever received. So yes. I'm, I'm very humbled. Thank you. Well, no, nah, no, nah, it's definitely a pleasure. They call her the bloom maker, joy spreader, and professional smiler. And I already see that. Uh, but <laughs> prior to, I, I, I did, I said, you know what? I really want to set the mood for her when she gets on. So um, when, when guests hop on, they typically just sit and wait and we talk and get our, you know, technology on point. But I said, let me have some Jimmy Buffett playing Margaritaville <laughs> when she yeah. hops on. And I, it was just interesting to see her face. And she was like, oh, and she started laughing. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Karen, it is so awesome to have you on the show today. Before we hop into the questions and provide value for couples that are going to be married in the, you know, wedding planning process, you know, explain a little bit about your journey. I heard a little bit about, you know, from your journey from corporate America to your studio. Share a little bit about, you know, how you got started in floral and designing and, and how you got to where you are today. Well, strap your seatbelts because we're in for a wild ride. But before, we go. <laughs> before we get there, I also want to mention that I really love bad jokes and puns. So okay, you said I graduated okay. from Wake Forest. Would that me make me the wake florist? Oh, I mean, <laughs> had, had, had to drop had to drop a horn had to drop a horn oh, on, on, on that one there the oh. wake florist. Now see, <laughs> the jokes like that. If I make a joke like that, my son will say that's that's a dad joke. He just looks what? at me with that look. But we're gonna. This is this is this is our time here, so you can bring as many jokes as you want to. Uh, the wake it. floor. So now when I see you at events, <laughs> <laughs> yes. is that the wake floors? All right, let me stop. Florist. Let me That's stop. it. I love oh it. My I love it. So my, my journey to where I am today was rather circuitous. You know, after I graduated from college, I did what all good, you know, postgraduate college students do. And I looked for a big girl job and, <laughs> you know, it, it, I did it for a while and, you know, made made money, built up my savings account, all of that. But then I realized pretty quickly, it was only a couple of years after graduation that my heart wasn't in it. And I wanted something where I could work with people. I could be creative. I use a lot of exclamation points and smiley faces and emails. And apparently corporate America frowns upon that. Wow. Who to thunk? So I really searched out for an industry that, you know, I could use that skill set and really be with people on the happiest days of their lives. And wow. so that is how I fell into floral design. And, you know, you mentioned this earlier. I've had experience in college. I worked probably eight different jobs while I was in school. Yeah. I worked for a caterer. Um, one that's not actually on the list is I actually did work at a bridal dress shop as well. Wow. So. Um, you know, kind of did the whole gamut, but really realized very quickly that the big picture of a wedding, wedding planning is not my thing. <laughs> I just, I love and shout out to all my wedding planners shout out there. Out to the planners. Not all heroes wear capes. Sometimes they wear po pointy toed flats too. So, um, <laughs> Shout out to all those wedding planners. Uh, but really, I loved the pretty part of weddings. And so that's how I fell into wedding design. And um, a, a little 
fun part about the beginning of my story, you know, I really started the company in 2009 and we all know what was happening in the economy and yeah. everything in 2009. It really hit me like a lightning bolt. I was like, you yeah. know what? I'm going to give this a try. And if it doesn't work out, what have I got to lose? You know, I'll, I'll re up the resume and I'll, I'll head back into corporate America. So I signed up for um, design school and I signed the lease on my first commercial space one month later. Wow. So it was the craziest leap of faith that I could have ever taken. And 12 years later, we're still kicking butt and taking names. So. Still kicking butt and taking <laughs> names. It's, oh, that's and what smiling, I like that. Smiling, and smiling. And exclamation points while we that, do it. <laughs> man, so let me ask you this. Some people that aren't used to smiling a lot, it hurts their cheek. Does, so oh, does, it's 100%. natural. That, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it does. Oh, okay. Oh, it okay. hurts my face. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. no amount of like smile workouts make it not hurt your face. But, oh, you know, my goodness. I'm like Buddy the Elf. I love it so much. Smiling's my favorite. So I just keep doing it. Oh, my goodness. And I got, and I got to give a shout out to... My guy Troy at Carolina DJ Professionals. When you mentioned using all exclamation marks and all that, his face just popped in my head. So oh, you are man. not by yourself. But what a fantastic journey of like, I'm with you on the whole, you know, if it doesn't work, hey, just I'd rather look back and say I tried and to be like, what if, you know? 100%, wow. Sure. And, and listen, and if it, I've had the opportunity to watch her and her team in action. They do an excellent job, very focused, but she loves to have fun. You just got to look for the big, you know, Lily Green Thumbs truck outside, uh, you know, but nah, kudos to you. And I thought you'll be perfect for this episode to kind of uh, kind of educate some of our couples that are, you know, in this process and give them some tips that. You know, they can take back and use or even like, listen, even if you're not getting married, if you're watching this, this is maybe something that you can share with someone that's mentioned getting married or so on and so forth. So let's head into our first um, question. And, and this is a girthy one that I'm I'm so excited to ask because I, I believe you're, it's going to provide a lot of value for our you know people who are watching and who are listening via the podcast. But how can couples use what they have with their flower budget to make the biggest impact 100 percent. so this like you said this is a big question and honestly the advice that i'm going to give can be spread across across your entire wedding planning so my advice is that you set your priorities what is the most important thing to you that you are just non-negotiable so what we see most frequently is the bride wants her bouquet to be beautiful of course you do do not compromise on your bouquet. Find other places to save money if you need to, but really make your bouquet something that'll make your heart stop when you see it for the first time. So that is my first piece of advice, prioritizing. Second piece of advice is to create a statement or a focal piece. And that would be, you know, maybe when the, the guests come in to the reception, maybe have a big, beautiful arrangement right there at the front, where all of the guest cards or the table cards are, or you know, maybe focus on the, the head table or the sweetheart table to have that focus design and wow factor. And then you can go simpler in other places. I'm gonna share a little secret with you. Okay. People won't remember the little things mm -hmm. when it comes to their wedding flowers. They're gonna remember the big things. So blow the big things out of the water feel free to go simple in other places. We have had plenty of weddings where the only places where they have tall over the top centerpieces are on the head table and everything else is simple, understated, but people remember that head table. Wow. Well, that, that right there is just kind of, I, I hope you all got a lot of value off of that. Just that, <laughs> that, I mean, if you didn't listen to anything else, that was uh, fantastic right there as far as just understanding you know things that you can like even down to the whole people don't remember the small details when it comes to you're right like some of the awe factor for some of the weddings that we have done as djs when you're walking in the room is like the the massiveness uh of it like wow like man i i, I like that a lot well, well, well let me ask you this then karen what are mistakes that couples make when choosing a floors for their wedding 
Am yeah. I even, is this even the right term, florist, or is it right. floor designer? Like, educate us, let us know. Right, yeah, I mean, there's, really, you can call it anything. You know, crazy flower lady works, too. I've <laughs> called that a number of times over my career. Uh, but I think the big thing is strictly picking your floral designer based on budget. Um, you're not comparing apples to apples. You're looking at an art form. So unlike looking at, let's say, shivari chairs, and you're saying, okay, I can get a shivari chair with a cushion for, I don't even know the prices of those, but let's say right. $10 from one vendor and $15 from another. Okay, well, that's an easy comparison to make. But with floral, you're looking at an entire experience. You're looking at communication. You're looking at are the centerpieces larger? Are they using higher quality flowers? Are, you know, it, I mean, you can't really compare those things. So my thing is when it comes to selecting a floral designer or florist or crazy flower lady, whatever <laughs> you want to call it, is to pick someone that you vibe with and someone you feel understands you. I'm going to tell you a secret right now. It is very, very rare for our first proposal for a client on any end of the spectrum from luxury wedding to super simple and everything in between. It is very rare for that proposal to not change between the day we meet and the day of the wedding. Tweaks and changes are made, whether it's design-wise, budget-wise, anything like that. If you find someone you are in love with and you really feel gets your vision, grab onto that person and don't let go. Mm, <laughs> you can mm. figure out the details later. No, I, I like that. And, and you're sharing a lot of good stuff that can apply to any category. One, thing I, want, one thing I wanted to highlight about something that you said, and it's kind of key there, is that it's not what I got. It's not just about the flowers it's an art form of how they design. So you're, you're actually paying for their ability to bring your vision to life. So you're not just paying for flowers. For sure. For sure. If you were playing for paying for flowers, you can pick them up from Costco in buckets. I mean, oh, there's, wow. it's a total different, <laughs> it's a total yeah. different thing. Um, and you know how we serve our customers and our design level and designability has changed over the years. The more you practice what you do, and I'm, Rasis, I'm sure you can say this about how you, you know, how you up a party, you yeah. know, your skill level has increased over the years. It's That's just, correct. it's what's going to happen after years right. and years of practice. Um, and, and we feel the same way as well. Actually, not too long ago, I shared a post on Instagram that was a how it started, how it's going uh, post yeah. with um, a picture from one of my very first events. And I made sure it was not a client event. It was actually <laughs> <something>. <laughs> I think it was something I did for the, um, you know, America's bridal consultants. Yeah organization or whatever. But um, you can see that there's a big difference between the skill level of what I designed 12 years ago and what I'm designing today. So wow. Yeah. So floral designers grow in their skill of design and being able to articulate the client's vision openly, I guess per se. That's the th that's the talent or the skill that you're exercising as time goes on. I would say so. And I, I'm a firm believer that you, and this applies to everything in life, you never stop learning. So I've taken a number of master classes, both online and multi-day in-person classes to, you know, learn new things and break out of my little design ruts that we all get into. And just to really expand what, um, what skills I have at my fingertips. And that has been a huge thing for me to be able to do that both in person and online. Wow. 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 Well, well, let me, let's ask this. We, 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 we've talked about, you know, how to pick the right floor designer. You even got me saying floor designer. Now I was saying floors. You're before. So bougie. Shout, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to all the floor designers. I, I, she made me correct myself. Um, so how should a couple allocate their budget for flowers? Like what's the, you know, what does that look like? For sure. So this is going to kind of circle back to our first point as well. Um, it all has to do with priorities. So if you go, um, you know, like on the knot or wedding wire or things like that, they do have budget planning calculators. And a lot of times you'll see between 10 and 15% allocated for flowers. So sometimes they lump in other decor like linens or lighting or drapery into that. Sometimes they don't. So I would say 10% is a pretty good number uh, to start with. But of course, if, you know, the band is your highest priority, maybe having over the top florals isn't. So shift your, you know, shift your budget around accordingly. 
vice versa, if you really want that wow factor with your flowers, maybe up that a little bit. So, but starting at that 10% and kind of seeing how everything shakes out, that's definitely a great way to do it. Well, awesome there. So as far as budgets go, let's talk about what's in right now and what couples are, what are you seeing that's popular right now? And, and, and I wish we were able to show pictures, a note to myself, but like what's in right now? What are the, yeah. some things that, you know, couples should know if you like a particular flower in season, out of season, just kind of share some tips right now, what you're seeing. Sure, sure, absolutely. So I would say up until maybe three or four months ago, we were really seeing a lot of the the white, the champagne, the blush, just very soft, romantic, lots of your lighter greeneries like silver dollar eucalyptus, you know, things like that. But in the past couple of months, I have seen a really dramatic shift with people going more bold with their color. And I think I've had more people asking for hot pink recently, wow. and it's kind of surprised me. So I think, you know, now hopefully we'll, we're all coming out of a the dreaded covid territory as far as weddings so i think people are just really ready to party yeah and so i i'm seeing bolder dress colors bolder linens bolder flowers and i'm here for it there it is yeah. and, and if you're watching this we're, we're this is right we're, we're in january right now 2022 so please put that into context as well but like she was saying i think she's saying that bold is in bold colors you're right though like i'm looking at some of these instagram photos even with bouquets and stuff like that you're seeing very vibrant colors um and stuff like that now are there particular flat is it more color based or flower type based or like how does that flow yeah. is it so it, it really all depends on the season. A lot of times when I do talk to the brides, so that's one of the questions that I ask. I say, okay, I'm looking at your inspiration images. Are you tied to particular types of flowers or is it just the general feel that you're going for, the general color palette? 9.9% .9 out of, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, people will say it's the general feel. So they're not necessarily hung up on one particular flower like we'd seen in the past. You know, there have been many times in the past where someone with a September or an October wedding would come to me and say, I have to have peonies in my bouquet. And I'm like, well, you might, how do you feel about changing your wedding date? Because that would be the only way we can get them. Um, thankfully, I have seen a lot of changes as far as um, growing technology. And we're getting uh, different, quote unquote, off-season flowers from other places around the world um, that used to be off-season uh, in certain times of the year and now aren't. For example, tulips. Forget, you know, when I first started my career, forget trying to get them after Mother's Day. There was no way between Mother's Day and maybe October-ish. Um, but now tulips are available all year round because they've really perfected the the hothouse technology of growing. Um, and it's really neat to see over the years how that's changed. Um, peonies, we're starting to be able to get them in October from, you know, we've seen some come out of Israel and Chile and just different areas around the world. The global flower market has really expanded quite a bit. So, but my big piece of advice, this is a really long winded way to say, you will be happier with the overall look of your flower if you or of your flowers in general if you don't get hung up on one particular type of flower mm -hmm. go for the overall look the overall color palette and let your florist really shine as far as bringing that to life wow uh w one thing i want to give you kudos on is if you go to karen's instagram page sometimes she does reels of her kind of preparing uh whatever arrangement she's preparing and it's so cool how she's grabbing the different type of flowers to kind of create this this masterpiece well, thank um, you. so definitely <laughs> want to give you some kudos there and just the awe factor once again when you walk into a room with flowers now grooms if you're watching this i was one, if you're that groom that's like what's the big deal about the flowers i was once like you i was <laughs> i was once like you i didn't think it was you know all that until I started to understand how beautiful it makes the room just it adds another sense of elegance and awe in combination with the decor. So that's just my two cents there. I but, love it. But but Karen, I, I definitely 
really appreciate all the nuggets that you share with our with our couples um, on this episode. Where where can they find you? Like, I want to work with Karen, or I, I want to <laughs> ask some questions, or For all sure. that. Where can they reach For out sure. and find you? So the place I hang out most is definitely Instagram, and that's at Lily Green Thumbs. Uh, one L and then an S on the end, L I L Y green thumbs with an S on the end. And I'm starting to play on TikTok a little bit too. So we'll see once we get into wedding season, I'll probably have some more fun videos of us being ridiculous with flowers over there. There it is. <laughs> well, Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us for the let's talk wedding show. I want to thank you, Karen, for joining us. It's definitely an honor to have you on the show and drop some some gold nuggets for for our you know for our future couple or our couples that are either planning or about to plan or watching this and like man maybe we should have did this or so on and so forth. But it is what it is. But thank y'all so much for tuning in. We're signing out. Thank you so much, Karen. Yeah, have a good thank one. you. Appreciate it.